Okay, so today what we are doing is we are starting a two-day lesson. It is section three, so tomorrow we will finish the lesson. So uh, we're going to get into the differences between the French and the English today. You need your highlighters and you need your markers. Okay, while, while the English colonists were settling the eastern coast, here we have the southern, the middle, the New England colonies, the French were exploring the North American interior. What I need you to do is highlight a number three different places. This is where the French were exploring. The Ohio River Valley, number one. The Mississippi really River Valley, number two, and the entire Great Lakes region, number three. Okay, so we got the coastal, this is the English, and the interior is the French. If you look at this map here, which is a great map, it shows you exactly where the English had settled, and it shows you in the blue right here, this is where the French had settled. Would you say that the French have a lot more land claim yeah, here? And then here we have the Spanish Florida, okay? And we got Span Spanish over here in the southwest, okay? This red and blue right here is an area that uh, actually France gave to England. It was an area that they gave to them in a treaty. So, by the way, Arkansas was owned at this time by who? The French, right? So when you look at it, you're going, oh, well, the French have a lot more land. So, uh, your main settlements that you have are going to be in Quebec and Montreal. Now, we've already talked about Quebec. Who was the founder of Quebec? One of our explorers. Samuel D. Champlain. You are correct. He was the founder of Quebec. And it started out as what? A trading post. A trading post. That's right. And then it became a city. Now, by 1760, now I need you to highlight this, New France had 80,000 people. So it's like, whoop, man, they're growing. But by that same amount of time, the British, highlight the British, had more than 1 million people. So if we are going to do a ratio, do some math today, if we were going to do a ratio, how badly does the British outnumber the French? Just an estimate. Like 1 to 10. 10 to 1. That's right. 10 to 1. Okay, so you got like 10 British settlers to one French settler here. Okay? Now, the Native Americans and the French get along, right? Why do they get along so well? The French wanted to learn from the Native Americans. They wanted to live like the Native Americans. The British wanted to come over here, the English, and they want to farm. And the French want to do what? Fish and, and hunt and, and live that life. And so they exchange, uh, for, or they come to the French forts, they exchange uh, the furs for goods such as iron pots and steel knives. If you had a skill that you could exchange to barter, we didn't have money. Anybody in here have a great skill? What is your skill? Um, I don't know. I Yes. I can mow lawns. Okay, so we have someone that can mow lawns. And so what he can do is mow lawns for food or maybe mow lawns for lodging. Yes. I can weed eat. You can weed eat. And so what we would have here is we could have a lawn trimming business. Very good. So what the English are doing is they're competing with the French for furs. Native Americans are also trying to sell, sell furs to the Europeans. And now the English are going to try to sell furs to the Europeans. And so what we're going to have is an economic and military alliance. I need someone to define alliance for me. Who can tell me what that is? Yes? Isn't that like um, friendship or like a group, like an a, I don't know how to put it. It's like people making a truce with each other. Yes, they kind of make a truce. What you have is you have these countries or these, these friends, these groups of people, and they form an alliance. Now, the bad thing about an alliance sometimes is that you have a situation where sometimes you get involved in someone else's fight. You don't even have a dog in the hunt, but you're friends with someone, and so if someone jumps on your friend because you're friends, you feel the need to jump on that person. Are you involved in that conflict, really? No. No, so like you, you, you have to be careful about alliances because they can get you mixed up into something that has nothing to do with you. 
So the Hurons and the Algonquins are allied with the French. Okay? Any of y'all ever watched Last of the Mohicans? Uh, I've heard of it. No okay, ever. so it's a movie. It was kind of about the French and Indian War. Uh, this actually is like a, a painting or a picture of the guy who actually um, played the villain in Last of the Mohicans. The Iroquois are going to ally with the Dutch and the English. But I want you to write something about the Iroquois. They're very careful. They're not impulsive and they're not going to jump in to a fight just because they're friends with the Dutch and the English. They're going to sit back and they're going to watch. They're very, very careful about what they become involved in. Is this wise? Very, very, very wise. Yes, it is. Now, alliances between, I need you to highlight this whole thing, alliances between the Europeans and Native Americans led to their involvement in each other's wars. World War I was started basically because of alliances, okay? As far as the whole world getting involved, they got everyone got involved because of alliances. The United States didn't, we got involved late in the war. We were not in alliances. In World War II, it started September 1st, 1939, when Hitler invaded Poland, or September 1st, 1939. So uh, we didn't get involved for two more years, and it was only because we were provoked. We just didn't jump in, okay? We, we favored a certain group, don't get me wrong, but we didn't just jump in. Okay, because we were buddies with someone. Who were we buddies with? Britain. Yeah. All right. French and Indian War lasted from 1754 to 1763. How many years is that? Nine. Nine years. A lot, yeah. Nine so years. I need you to write nine years out to the side because Five. later on they're going to call it something else. And I need you to highlight this whole sentence right here. The French and Indian War is going to decide which nation would control the eastern and northern parts of North America. Okay. So this, is, this war right here is going to decide. French, is French, it going to be French. French or is it going to be English? Who is going to be in control? Now the seeds for the French and Indian War are planted when British fur traders began moving into the Ohio River Valley. Underline that. Who owns the Ohio River Valley? We already right. talked about that. Who? The French. The French. Yep. But now the British are moving right in. So whenever they wanted something, they just started a war to get it? Well, they don't start a war, but when the English feel like that they need to be somewhere, they're going to go to that place. And the French are like, hey, wait a minute. That's this right. is our claim. This doesn't belong to you. This is ours. Finders, keepers. And the British are like, oh, the Ohio River Valley, there's plenty of room for all of us. We can just all share. Well, the French decide they need a defense. And so what they're going to do is they are going to build a, build a series of forts to protect their settlements. This is all good until they built one particular fort. This one fort that they built... They built on land that they thought was theirs, but the colony of Virginia also claimed this land. And Virginia said, oh no, you have built a fort on our land. You must leave. French are like, hey, we built this fort. This is to protect our settlement. This land belongs to us. So we're looking at a border dispute, right? So the governor of Virginia, what he does, his name is Governor Dinwiddie is he decides, I'm going to send a group of young gung-ho men to this French fort and tell them that they need to leave. They need to just get out of the way, just let us have the fort and leave us alone. Now, he puts my favorite person in history in charge, George Washington. I love George. Now, the only problem is George Washington at this point is 21 years old. Is it wise to put a 21-year-old in charge? Not really, because they're... It depends on responsible they are. Well, if they're responsible, let no man despise your youth. I totally understand that. But, you know, 21 years old, and they're gung-ho, and they want to make a name for themselves, and they want to do good, so they're very enthusiastic. So George Washington, who is a major at this time, and his merry band of men are 